good morning and welcome to this live event uh, on smart vision sensors uh, we had a few technical difficulties at the start but i think we now we're good to go uh, let me first introduce myself i am nico hoyveld and i work at omra europe as a business development manager for traceability and machine vision systems Today, I have the pleasure uh, to give you a short introduction uh, on vision sensors and their advantages over traditional sensors in simplifying manufacturing quality inspections. Uh, for that, I would like to thank you, think, uh, well, I'd like you to think about the visual inspection processes that you use in manufacturing today. And you may have tried to automate them uh, using optical sensors or maybe even full-fledged machine vision systems. I would like you to think about your experience uh, with that process and what would happen if one could combine the simplicity of an optical sensor uh, with the inspection capabilities of a machine vision system. So in this presentation, uh, I will discuss the limits of using traditional sensors and the reasons to consider uh, using smart vision sensors instead. And we will take a closer look at the characteristics of vision sensors uh, their capabilities and specific advantages over traditional sensors. To give you an impression on the wide range of possibilities that vision sensors enable, we will look at common use cases with practical examples of the five most common vision sensor applications. In the last part of this event, I will introduce Omron's newest range of vision sensors uh, with the AutoVision configuration software and followed by a demonstration on a set of real parts. After this demonstration, there's a live Q&A session where I will be available for answering your questions. So discrete optical sensors uh, have been around for well, decades and they are commonly used in automation systems for a common task, such as detecting the presence of objects, measuring distances, measuring dimensions or angles, or maybe even checking color. Uh, there's also specialty sensors that are available for a lot of other parameters too. And the traditional sensors deploy a variety of technologies to perform a very specific task in a very specific environment. And traditional sensors are very durable and very easy to use as long as the inspections that you need to perform remain relatively simple. So maybe we can take a closer look at the, challenging, uh, the challenges that we run into when we try to use simple sensors for more complex inspections. So added complexity uh, usually means that you need to use multiple sensors and each of those sensors operate at a specific distance. And this can make their mechanical alignment difficult. And this alignment difficulty becomes even bigger uh, when the machine needs to handle products of different sizes and shapes uh, in the same machine. So also not all inspections uh, that we might want to do translate uh, into a parameter that can easily be measured with um, a traditional sensor. And let me try to illustrate that with uh, the orange use bottles you see in this picture. So detecting the presence of the bottle um, inside the machine is a simple task and typically uh, present sensors are used to do that. Uh, but there's a lot of other things that uh, we might be interested in checking if you want to make sure that the quality of the bottle is as it is expected. So checking the cap color to make sure that the right caps have been used uh, is still something that can relatively easily be done uh, with a traditional sensor. But you can imagine that this application becomes a lot more challenging uh, when the same machine uh, needs to handle different size bottles um, you know, for different brands of products. And if you want to create a perfect product, uh, there's quite a few more quality checks that can be considered. So the uh, question is, has the right label been used for this bottle? And is it in the right position on the bottle? Has it been nicely aligned? So if the cap is on, um, has it been closed correctly? And has the bottle been filled to the right level? And is the best before date or the date code being printed on the cap um, or is the printer not working? And all these questions, and there are probably uh, a lot more, uh, are extremely challenging to answer uh, using traditional sensors only. 
And this is where smart sensors can make a big difference. So what are these smart vision sensors and what makes them different from the traditional sensors that uh, we've all been using? Well, as the name suggests, uh, vision sensors use pictures to inspect the product. And because of this, all vision sensors essentially are cameras that capture images. Uh, a vision sensor has an internal processor that runs the actual inspection software. And the software does uh, the inspection by examining the picture taken. And this examination is done by applying vision tools for specific checks. And most vision sensors uh, provide a wide range of tools for different tasks. If you look at the pictures at the bottom um, of this slide, um, here are some examples of the inspections that we were discussing for the orange juice bottles. So from left to right, uh, we see a date code presence check, a fill level and seal check, a cap closure inspection, and a combined cap and fill level inspection. We will get to the details of the tools uh, that uh, do these checks later, but these pictures give you an impression of the type of image uh, that the vision sensor uses for its inspection. The fact that vision sensors use an internal inspection program makes them very flexible because you can change this program uh, when the requirements or when the products changes. Uh, like traditional sensors, uh, vision sensors can output a pass-fail signal, but in addition, uh, the inspection software can output a range of measurement data too. And this data can be used for many purposes, including quality improvement uh, or logging. Also, vision sensors uh, quite often come with network interfaces such as Ethernet IP or Profinet IO, and that makes them very easy to integrate into PLC control systems. And what's also very important is that vision sensors have been developed and improved over many years now. And the latest generation products require no programming at all. Instead, uh, they are configured with a graphical user interface and dragging and dropping tools. And that makes them very easy to use. And I will demonstrate that at the end uh, of this live event. So the ability to combine more complex inspection in a single device is a strong driver to use vision sensors. But there is more that motivates people to use them. So many vision sensors can read uh, barcodes and text too. And it makes it possible to read part traceability codes with the same device that performs the inspection. And this removes the cost and complexity of adding a separate barcode reader to the system. Uh, vision sensors uh, quite often have a data interface, and through that interface, you can uh, change set points or select specific inspection programs directly from a machine controller. And this makes it possible to adjust vision sensors remotely uh, without the requirement to have a technician present to uh, physically adjust the sensor in the machine. And as mentioned, um, vision sensors can provide measurement data from the inspection performed. And this data can be used for process optimization, monitoring, or other quality control purposes. So you get a lot more data than just a simple pass fail that you get from different sensors. And the image that is captured by the sensor can automatically be stored for compliance, documentation, or testing purposes. And the ability to see the images and see what the vision sensor is seeing uh, makes vision sensors relatively easy to, to set up and configure. Uh, vision sensor software might, may also have a built-in emulator, and these emulators that is built into the software can be used to rerun uh, inspection programs on images that were captured before. And this uh, functionality makes it easy to find out why uh, an inspection failed on a certain part at runtime and uh, understand what improvements can be made. So I would like to clarify some of the typical vision sensor applications, and some of those I will cover in more detail later. So if we start with uh, the defect detection um, um, application, uh, here the vision sensor is used to find uh, defects uh, in the parts that are being checked, uh, such as maybe the hole in this gasket or a missing O-ring in, in this part. Uh, and this allows, let's say, quality inspection on uh, the part. A similar is assembly verification, uh, where the vision sensor is used uh, to check if a part has been properly assembled. 
Uh, in the example here, uh, we look at the color of the car fuses in the fuse box. And by checking the color in each position, uh, it is possible to easily check with a vision sensor that the sensor has been placed or uh, um, a fuse has been placed and it's been placed in the right position. Um, certain parts um, are um, need to have certain dimensions. And uh, instead of uh, doing an offline measurement uh, of sample parts, a vision sensor can be used uh, to check those dimensions on each part produced. Uh, and then there's an application called material verification. And in material verification, uh, vision sensors are used to ensure that the right consumables or the right parts are loaded on a machine. So in the example that we show here, uh, we are looking at packaging materials and um, to check um, if the right packaging material um, is loaded on the machine. In this case, we use the color of uh, the packaging material. Um, but quite often, you can also use things like logos, texts, or barcodes to achieve the same thing, or maybe even the size of the package. Um, the fifth um, application of vision sensors um, is actually using them in functional testing. So those are test systems that will, let's say, exercise or test um, certain devices by sending signals to them and seeing what the response is. And the vision sensor can be used as the eyes of the test system to pick up those responses. So one can, for example, check if the display shows the correct data after being set up, or maybe if the right LEDs uh, are available and come on um, if the control system drives them, or maybe even things like uh, checking uh, speedometers to see if the angle of uh, the needle matches uh, the speed it has been set to. Uh, vision sensors also do counting, and counting can be used to um, well, find missing things um, uh, or making sure that the right number of products have been loaded. And we already talked about barcode and text reading, so here are some examples of what uh, the text and barcodes look like that a vision sensor can typically pick, be picked up. Apart for traceability purposes, these barcodes can also be used for assembly verification, so making sure that the right part is used in the right place. The last application is positioning, uh, where vision sensors are used to pick up the position of parts and feeding them to part handlers or robots. Uh, and we can take a look, a closer look at that application, uh, maybe on the next slide. So detecting the position and orientation of a part um, can be done with a vision sensor in, in different ways. And the most common one is shown here, uh, where you teach the outline of a part uh, to the vision sensor. and then. The vision sensor can use that outline uh, to find the position of the part anywhere in the picture and also find the rotation of the part. And this information can be provided to a robot and, and this robot can then pick up the part in the given position. And because it knows the orientation, it can uh, present the part in a consistent way to a next process step or like in this example to, let's say, uh, a human operator that picks it up. Uh, So part presence verification um, is actually yeah, probably the most common uh, use of vision sensor. And um, it's used for assembly verification uh, and replacing human inspection. In this example here, um, we show a section of a cell phone uh, being assembled. And we check it for correct assembly using these presence checks. And uh, well, like shown in this example, the presence check is used to check if adhesive has been applied if all the necessary screws have been placed, and if the mounting holes for the next assembly are uh, open and not blocked. Uh, at the same time, uh, uh, traceability code is read uh, for registration of the part. Uh, a simple presence check example uh, is shown here, uh, where uh, the vision sensor is uh, used to check if the mounting hardware is available on this plastic part. This again replaces human inspection. Uh, this technically could be done with uh, two well positioned traditional sensors too. But by using a vision sensor, uh, the alignment becomes a lot less critical and the, the whole setup can easily be changed to accommodate parts of different sizes um, or uh, that have additional mounting hardware. Another example, uh, maybe a third function, and we talked about the measurement uh, verification of part dimensions. 
uh, again to replace manual inspection. Um, so vision sensor can measure distances, diameters, angles, uh, and they provide uh, flexibility that is very hard to replicate with traditional sensors. So in this example, uh, we measure the gap uh, in a spark plug. Uh, at the same time, uh, the vision sensor is used to check the shape um, of uh, the earth electrode on the, the, the spark, plug, spark plug as well. And again, this is very hard to do with uh, traditional sensors. Um, another quality inspection example is shown here, uh, where the vision sensor is used to check if a plastic part uh, is inserted properly and uh, the four locking fingers are locked in place. And because this part can rotate, again, this is very hard to do with traditional sensors. But with a vision sensor measuring uh, the circle made up of the four fingers uh, can easily be used to uh, do the assembly verification, making sure that everything is correct. Same with this application. Uh, so here we're looking at uh, bottle caps. And the task is to check whether or not the, the seal has been placed. Uh, this is a, a relatively simple thing to do with a traditional sensor. But the advantage of using a vision sensor here is that it's, it more easily handles differently colored caps. So no adjustment needed there. And more importantly, it can also detect um, seals that are broken much more easily than a traditional sensor. And a good example is the broken seal uh, that is shown here. You would still detect the seal with a normal sensor, uh, but the vision sensor knows that something's wrong in this area. And the last topic uh, that I want to clarify is the ability of vision sensors uh, to become the eyes of the machine and provide uh, rich object information uh, generated by combining multiple inspections. Uh, with this information, uh, machine controllers can reach a much higher level of automation uh, by taking intelligent decisions on process steps. And the fact that the inspection program can easily be updated uh, makes it easy to add new intelligence to the machine with updates as the application requirements evolve. And a good example of uh, vision sensor-based machine, machine intelligence is shown on this slide. And these are the instruments that are used for evalu evaluating medical samples uh, collected at hospitals or doctor's offices. So larger laboratories uh, use automated test instruments and robotic handling systems for processing the sample tubes. And for a reliable operation, uh, these systems need to recognize the tube type, uh, know the dimensions of the tube in question, and read patient identification codes for traceability. And in addition, error situations such as missing, empty, or damaged tubes need to be detected to allow the systems to take appropriate action. And the animated images uh, on the screen uh, show an example of the variety of tubes that are handled with the robotic transport system on the right. And based on the inspection shown here, this transport system decides what to do with the sample. So for example, whether or not to send it to a device that takes the cap off, uh, or maybe what diagnostic test uh, system to send it to for processing. And the second animated image uh, shows a similar application, uh, but then inside a medical analyzer uh, where those uh, tubes are placed in racks. And here you can show that you can actually do four tubes at the same time, combine a lot of measurements into a single device. So now let's look at what a vision sensor might look like. So Omron supplies a wide range of vision sensors and machine vision products. But for the purpose of this event, I'd like to present the Omron F400 series as an example of what a range of vision sensor looks like and what type of functionality they offer. So what you can see here is that the F400 series uh, supports a wide range of optical lighting and interface options uh, to suit any application um, need. So there's also an optional autofocus system that would allow the vision sensor to work at different distances uh, without mechanical adjustments needed. And all of these devices also contain a web-based visualization that allows you to see what uh, the, the sensor is seeing while configuring, while working. So all variants uh, shown here use the Omron AutoVision software and that contains powerful vision sensor tools. And the same software is also used for the more compact uh, S300 series that you see here. 
And this is uh, the type of vision sensor uh, that was, is used in OEM applications, uh, like the tube detection applications uh, that we saw on the previous slide. So now that you have an idea of what the hardware might look like, uh, let's take a closer look at uh, the AutoVision software. And the AutoVision software is the software that Omron uses for the F400 and F300 series vision sensors. And it has been developed uh, to make common vision sensor applications uh, very simple to implement. It has a very intuitive user interface and you configure it by uh, dragging and dropping tools uh, into the program. And this means that little uh, or no training is needed uh, for using it. Uh, you could actually state that you probably already know how to use it. Uh, just download it, install it, uh, play around with it, and you will quickly get the hang of it. So regardless of the simplicity of the user interface, uh, AutoVision comes with a powerful set of vision tools and supports the common applications such as part locations, presence absence, and, and the measurements applications. At the same time, this vision tool set can be expanded uh, with tools for code reading, text reading, uh, or even code quality inspections. So AutoVision uh, can be used with an Omron Vision Sensor connected, but it also has a built-in emulator, and this allows you to do application testing and optimizations on captured images. And um, you don't need to have a camera connected while you do that. The key of the AutoVision software is its ease of use and ability to quickly create inspection jobs. And the best way to illustrate uh, what that means uh, is to do a live demonstration. And for this live demonstration, uh, I'm using an Omron F430F Vision. Vision. And the first thing the camera lets you do is set up the picture. And in order to create the picture, I would need to put a part under it, like this. And then I can use the autofocus feature to create uh, the focus and then work with the light and camera exposure settings to create a picture that we can work with, like this. And the next step is to go to the edit mode. And in edit mode, we create the actual inspection. Um, the way uh, this program works is on the left column, uh, we have the program which always starts with a picture and ends with an output. And then we have the tools that we can use, uh, which is locating, uh, we can count things, we can find the presence of things, and we can measure um, angles, distances, diameters, uh, and, and other things. And uh, we have the ability to work with uh, the outputs of those tools and assign them to I.O. Um, this part is on my desk, uh, so it's not very well positioned like it would be uh, in a machine. And this is why uh, I could use a locator uh, to more accurately place the tools on this part. And I can find it within the outer window or search window. And the inner box that I'm drawing right now uh, allows me to train the outline of the object. And this is the outline that the software will use to find it. And it, right now it's trained on this small hole and uh, the outline of the, the outside of the part. So if I go to tryout mode now, and you can see that the tool is following uh, the part around when I move it in the field of view. So the next step is to create our first inspection. And let's start with the screws, uh, the three screws here in the center uh, that sometimes go missing. So let's try to count them uh, by looking at their shape. And this shape counting works similar to the locate tool in that I have an outer box where I find can tell the software where to look for the items. So let's include all screws. And the inner box allows me to teach the software what a screw looks like. And right now I found all three screws, as you can also see here in the tool that got inserted. So now tell the tool that three screws that we're interested in and nothing else. So now it will create an error if it found anything but three screws. 
and to make it less critical and we'll also loosen up the tool a bit to be less precise uh, so it's more easy to find uh, screws under different circumstances too so let's now verify that it works as intended by putting a part in that is missing screws and if I do so uh, right now actually I need to move it inside the search box so it's found a part position tool and it found a single screw and that means that this part is rejected um, so the next step uh, would be to look for the plastic parts that are sometimes missing and I can do so with the presence tool and I can place it over the plastic part and then start counting the edge pixels so on this um, it found 1500 of them so let's say that I'm happy if I found at least a thousand and we need sort a second tool for the other side Here, and the count is 1600. So, again, I say that a thousand pixels is good. So, with that, uh, we created a test for uh, those two plastic parts. So, let's see if uh, we go to a part where those plastic parts are missing. If you run this part through and you see that it fails three tools uh, one because the screw is missing and the other two because the plastic parts are missing so the last part I would like to check for um, is uh, the motor mount uh, or height adjustment here um, again I will use the presence tool to count edge pixels something like this so there's about 2000 2100 of them so let's say that uh, things are okay if we find at least 1200 of them so then uh, the next thing is to verify that it's actually detecting the missing part here uh, by running it through again. And here you see that uh, the part is missing and it uh, detected that uh, as uh, expected. And then the last step would be to verify that if I take a part that is 100% correct, um, there you see that we still have a bit of trouble finding uh, the motor mount there's only 800 of them in this case so let's go back to maybe uh, 500 pixels here uh, now it's, it's being found take one step back to the missing part And it's still uh, oh, and it's still find these. This one is an error. So this is the proper setup of this tool. And go back to the perfect part again, uh, which is detected properly. So the next thing, uh, before I um, go into run mode to show you this program, uh, I will tell the camera uh, to trigger once a second so it's easier to show and I will make some of the values uh, in the tools available for use in the visualization and for that I'm using these links and these links will make the values show up in uh, the uh, visualization as well so the last step is to go to run mode and with that uh, the program is transferred to the camera and um, it's, it's running on the camera and it's taking a picture once 
every second. As you can see, if I put my hand in, uh, it will fail. And I can now maybe switch to the visualization. And actually, before I do that, I will close the Auto Vision program. So you see that it's no longer needed uh, to run the program. Um, so this is the visualization. Um, it's essentially a web page that uh, lives on the camera and that can be opened in any browser by going to the IP address of the camera. And right now it shows a picture uh, of the inspection and all the values that we just linked, uh, they're green, so they're all right. And uh, the statistics of uh, the, the camera running. If I go to a part that is not right, so there's something missing. Um, you can see that uh, the visualization changed, so it identifies the tool that has an error. And you also can show here that the inspection is failed and that in this case it was the motor adjust block that was missing, that is, uh, is failing too. Um, so this is an easy way of, of showing what is going on on the vision sensor. And this view is actually also fully editable. So if I press the edit button, I can also add elements to this view. Uh, there's a lot of things to do, but for example, I could use an image film strip uh, that shows me the picture. Um, I think that's enough for now. So I can go out of edit mode, save it on the camera. And now here I have a picture that shows the failing picture. Or if I go back to my uh, good part, uh, it shows the, the, the good pictures. So I think I've shown that it's, it's fairly simple to create uh, vision inspections with um, a, a smart vision sensor and that uh, with such a sensor, it's easy to find defects on parts that would normally be very difficult to find with conventional sensors. Yeah, so with this demonstration, uh, we've reached the end of this live event, uh, in which I've shown you how vision sensors enable applications far beyond the capabilities of traditional sensors. Uh, we've looked at different application examples that hopefully inspire you to explore using uh, vision sensors for your sensing applications too. And uh, you, know, you can find uh, a lot more on Omron's uh, vision sensors on the uh, Omron websites. And I'll show you a direct link to the inspection systems on the next slide. Uh, I would like to point you to the download link for the Auto Vision program, which I will show, also show on the next slide. Uh, this is a program that I just demonstrated, and from this link, uh, you can download a fully functional copy of the software, and you can use this copy, uh, even if you don't own an Omron um, vision sensor, uh, to test out your application on images that you've captured with other cameras. And it would allow you to also get hands-on experience with Omron uh, vision sensing capabilities uh, before even buying uh, your first Omron sensor. Um, so. I will now try to answer the questions that you have uh, placed in the chat. So let's see what comes in. So there, there were a few questions uh, that had to do with the availability of the product uh, in, in different markets. Um, I think the best thing I, I can do there is um, to point you to the Omron or the industrial.omron.eu website. On that website, you will find, um, let's say, the contact information for local Omron offices. And those local offices uh, will be able to help you uh, getting access to those products. Uh, there's also a few things I saw that had to do with specific applications. Um, Omron, Omron offices also employ, let's say, application engineers that can help you with uh, say scoping your applications or finding out what, what sensor to use for, for what applications. Uh, so that's also not something that I will be able to answer in this, this live session. And then I will just quickly scroll through the, the questions here to see what else there is to answer.
So I have a question here. So what sensor to use in distance measurements? Um, and so the answer depends a bit on what you consider a distance. Um, so vision sensors measure the distances between things, objects, um, edges visible in the picture. And any vision sensor can do that. Um, if you need uh, to measure the, des the distance to a certain object, uh, so from the sensor to an object, uh, you would be using uh, probably an on laser sensor or something else. So vision sensors will not measure, uh, say, distance from the sensor to an object, uh, but it will measure distances between objects that are visible in the image. And there's a question here for motor vibration analysis. Um, it's not something that I can answer here, I think. Uh, but again, I would suggest you to contact your, your local uh, Omron office. Uh, there's a question about recordings. Um, the the uh, recording of this live session will also be uh, posted on the Omron YouTube channel, so you can you know, review it uh, at your own leisure. Uh, actually, there's, there's already answered in the chat, I see. Uh, then there's a question uh, if these sensors are IoT. Uh, so I think IoT stands for the Internet of Things. Um, so technically, yes. Um, so these sensors have uh, an interface that allows you to connect them to, to networks and they can communicate their data to uh, as a higher level systems uh, for logging purposes or for quality check purposes. Uh, so yes, this would be an example of a sensor that uh, feeds the information uh, to the Internet of Things and uh, that allows you to uh, get a, a lot more direct access to data directly on the manufacturing line. Um, and then some application questions. So for those application questions, yeah, please contact your local um, Omron office. Um, how can we interface with the PLC? And are there any project details available? Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's different ways of interfacing with the PLC. Um, so a very common way is to use the industrial networks capabilities of those sensors. So the, the Omron sensors come with Profinet IO or Ethernet IP. Uh, which will get you the information directly into your PLC program and allows your PLC program to easily change things like inspection jobs or set points. Uh, there are, there's a network manual uh, for the vision sensors that can be downloaded uh, from the website. Um, at the same time, there's also some tutorials that are available um, that, that show you how to do this. And I think this answers the questions we had. So I will stay on for another few minutes to see if there's any um, any additional questions. Uh, uh, but uh, um, in any case, I would like to thank you for your attendance today. Um, I hope to I hope that it was informative for you and uh, uh, that you have learned something about about vision sensors uh, and that you will be able uh, to use them maybe on your next project. Okay, so I think we've reached the end of the session. So thanks everybody and uh, goodbye.